You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. Hey guys, I am so glad to have a new episode of the Herbalist Path out. Today, I think that we all know that our gut health is directly related to the health of our brain, our immune system, and our overall health. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about one of my favorite categories of herbs that can help improve your digestion and gut health and you and your life. And they are bitter herbs. So if you want to learn a little bit more about what bitters do for you and your body and how they can improve the health of your body, stay tuned because I got some good stuff for you. Welcome to the Herbalist's Path, where we're on a mission to inspire a movement where there's an herbalist in every home, again, with your host, clinical herbalist, Melissa Mutterspa. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Herbalist's Path. I feel like it's been so long since I've talked to you. I just took a break over Christmas break time, and it feels like it's been forever since I've recorded a podcast episode. And one thing that I noticed over Christmas break is I ate way too many of the wrong foods, and I just felt gross and bloated and yucky and just like, oh my gosh, why did I do that? I so know better, but like the temptation is just always there. So I figured we would do a little episode all about gut health and why it's so important in our everyday Because we all know that it's directly connected to the health of our brain, the health of our immune system, and just our overall health and well-being. And of course, in my opinion, there's some pretty great news that there are herbs that can help you keep your digestive system in tip-top shape. Of course, you know, there are those varying lifestyle factors that are going to make those herbs work better for you and for your body, like your diet and avoiding all of those Christmas cookies and chocolates or other inflammatory foods for your unique body. Of course, exercise is pretty amazing for keeping your gut and overall health in check. Move it or lose it, people. And sleep health. Sleep health plays an incredibly vital role in your overall health. 
The truth be told, overall, all the herbs that I'm going to talk about in this episode don't work so well when you're not able to treat your body well in a holistic fashion. But all that being said, there's still an awful lot of magic and power in these incredibly beautiful and precious plants. And today, I figured we'd take a little bit of time to chat about bitter herbs and how they affect your digestion especially after you've eaten so many sweets and other bad for you foods over the holidays, right? I mean, tell me I'm not the only one here. (laughs) I can't resist the chocolate sometimes. Anyways, bitters are really great because they help treat your body as an integrated whole and you can use them kind of as a preventative medicine even. The bitter flavor is definitely uh, very much to do with the taste and your taste buds because the bitter flavor comes in and triggers a response from your taste buds that are located on the back of your tongue. There's actually been some research that shows that the bitter taste receptors, which are known as TAS2R, they're not only in your mouth and in the oral cavity, but there's also evidence of these receptors in your gastrointestinal tissue, including your stomach. And they've also been found in your respiratory tract as well. And I have a feeling that that is a large part of why bitter herbs can help with your immune health as well. I think it's really fascinating research on those bitter receptors, but it's definitely a much deeper level that I'm going to go in today's podcast. But anyway, so what I was saying before is that the bitter flavor stimulates a response from your taste buds that are on the back of your tongue. And they send this message to your central nervous system, which then sends a message to your gut to release the digestive hormone gastrin. And gastrin helps your pancreas to produce enzymes to aid in digestion, and it also helps the liver to produce more bile. So it's stimulating the intestines to help move food through your digestive tract. So overall, it's safe to say that bitters help stimulate your appetite. They also stimulate the release of your digestive juices from your liver, the pancreas, and your duodenum. And that helps with all kinds of digestive issues that might be due to various allergens in life. Bitters are also going to increase the flow of bile from your liver and improve your liver's ability to detoxify your body. They help to regulate pancreatic hormones that also regulate your blood sugar, insulin, and the glucagon. And bitter herbs can even help stimulate the self-repair mechanisms for your gut wall. So having healthy digestive function is extremely important in maintaining overall health and preventing disease. It's actually been shown that low acidity in your digestive system leads to poor nutrient absorption and abnormal gut flora. Low gastric acidity has also been linked to several chronic diseases such as rosacea, eczema, gallbladder disease, and asthma, as well as making you more susceptible to bacterial and parasitic infections of the intestines. Bitter herbs also have a tonic effect on the body as they really do a great job of helping with poor upper digestive function or low appetite. And they can even be helpful for people who are suffering from anemia. They are really great if you're dealing with various food allergies or intolerances. And as I said before, they can do quite a good job of boosting your overall immune function. And of course, I totally love that there's a great array of herbs you can use to get bitters into your body and work with you to achieve your optimal health. Again, remember, you got to keep a proper diet, you got to sleep, you got to exercise, you got to do all these things to take care of your body as well. So herbs are just your friends that help you along. And some of my favorite bitter herbs, one of them for sure is chamomile. And I just, I love chamomile. One, it's just beautiful and it's just really yummy. And when I use chamomile, like when we're blending teas at the shop, 
that like apple-y fresh scent when I'm near it, it just brings me to this state of happiness just by seeing it or being around it. It's really funny. My daughter has always loved to pick the chamomile out of my tea as I'm drinking it. Like I'll drink the Unfrazzle Your Dazzle or our Digesties and she just wants to eat the chamomile flowers, which I think is pretty cool because if you're like most people, you probably think of chamomile and you think about relaxing or anti-anxiety or going to sleep. And my daughter could definitely use it for anxiety factors. But the reality is chamomile is also really great for your gut. So it's really rich in essential oils that act specifically on your digestive system and help to ease gassiness and bloating and tummy upset. It also soothes the walls of your intestines and helps to calm overall inflammation in your gut. And of course, it's rich in bitters. <laughs> so one thing I notice when I'm brewing tea and it's got chamomile in it is if I let it steep for too long, like over 10 or 15 minutes, that sweet apple taste that I could smell and love from earlier is replaced by a very strong bitter flavor. And it's that same bitter flavor that is going to stimulate the salivation and the rest of your digestive juices to flow. So it's actually a really good friend for gut health. And that's totally why I use chamomile in my digestive tea because it's all about loving your gut and easing digestion. And then another really popular bitter herb that is darn near everywhere, and this is part of why I like it so much, is dandelion. Yeah, the exact same pesky weed that pops up all over your yard and pretty much everywhere you look. It's got some amazing benefits as not just a bitter herb, but it's also a very nutritious herb all the way around. So you can use the dandelion root, or you could also use the spring leaves as food. So the spring greens, they're just, they're beautiful. Once you get to know how much medicine is in that beautiful little plant, they're a totally welcome sight after a few months of eating all of those heavy winter rich foods that we tend to eat. Like, wouldn't it be nice if dandelion greens just suddenly popped up right at the new year? <laughs> right now I'm kind of feeling that way. Anyways, you can use those greens as fresh salad greens or turn them into a pesto or saute them in a dish with some garlic or onion. You can really do a lot with dandelion greens. And they're not only rich in bitters and able to stimulate your digestion really well, they're also super nutritious, like I had said before. So they're really rich in potassium, they're rich in calcium, phosphorus, and also inulin. And the roots of dandelion are also super rich in inulin. So inulin is, it's what's known as a prebiotic for the gut. So it's a starchy little carbohydrate that does uh, a great job of helping to improve your gut flora and overall health. So if you think about the dandelion and how strong it is and how it's coming back year after year, no matter how many times people try and kill it, you can also think about the roots of the dandelion and how they do this really magical thing as they spend their time digging deep into the earth. And as they do that, they extract all these amazing vitamins and minerals into the plant and bring it in there for you and your body to use to nourish you with manganese and iron and calcium and potassium. Yeah, there's a lot of power in that little plant. And I think it's so cool. It says so much about what it can do for us when it, it again, it just spreads everywhere. And you can think back, hopefully nobody in your neighborhood or your family is using herbicides to kill it off these days. But just think about how many people have spent so long got, getting so mad at these darn dandelions in my yard, darn weeds. But they're such good food and they're such good medicine. And the roots are also amazing for people that are dealing with stagnation, like stagnant stuck liver. It helps to get your bile flowing, which is going to improve sluggish digestion, especially if you have a, a lot of problems breaking down various fats in your food. It can also be helpful for people who are suffering from excessive symptoms of PMS as well. That's dandelion. So dandy. 
There's quite a few plants that look a lot like that yellow flower on a dandelion, and they might even grow in a little whirl of leaves. And But if you look at the dandelion leaves, they're very, very sharp. And if you think of dandelion as dent de leon, or tooth of the lion, that's one of the ways you can recognize the leaves in the early spring and gather them up and make sure no dogs have peed on them or anything crazy like that, but gather them up and wash them and gobble them up because they're so, so good for you. And another herb that is really great and good for you and rich in bitters is gentian. And this one, of course, it's rich in bitters. So what does it do? It helps stimulate the appetite and it promotes the flow of digestive juices such as your saliva and your bile and other gastric juices. So it's this really beautiful, lovely little yellow plant that grows natively in pastures and meadow meadows around <laughs> the southern and central European mountains. And it's commonly used as an aperitif, so uh, people will take it uh, before meals to aid in digestion. Where I live up on Mount Hood in Oregon, we have another gentian that grows natively up here in the high mountain meadows. It's called mountain bog gentian. And it's the first gentian I ever met in person. And it's just this beautiful little purple flower that is truly amazing to look at. And fortunately, it is local to me. And, you know, I know how to harvest it in a sustainable way that shows respect and allows it to come back for future generations. So I can walk out into the forest and gather some of, actually the meadows, and gather some of this gentian for its beautiful bitter properties, as well as it's just immense beautiful, beautiful flowers. And of course, where I get to go to get connected with those plants is also very, very nice. So another super, super popular herb that we herbalists like to use for its bitter properties is wormwood. It happens to also be the main ingredient in the drink absinthe. So the Latin name for wormwood is Artemisia absinthium. Traditionally, this plant was used for all kinds of things, gut health related. Traditionally, wormwood was used to support healthy appetite levels and overall gastrointestinal function. So it's a really wonderful carminative. So it's going to help to ease gassiness and bloating and tummy upset. It's going to promote healthy gut flora and balance in the gut. And it's really, really, guess what? rich in bitters. <laughs> it's also commonly used to cleanse your entire digestive tract of parasites and toxins and not to overuse the term cleanse there. Be cautious. Don't just jump on it because I said cleanse and you're like, oh my God, cleanse. Your body does a great job of cleansing itself already. So Anyways, whether you are using bitter herbs before a meal to fire up your digestion and stimulate the flow of those digestive juices or to ease your gassiness and bloating, or if you're taking bitters after a meal to try and ease heartburn or indigestion, hopefully after hearing this, you can really see that the use of bitters are critical to your gut health and to your overall health. And if you really like learning about gut health and herbs and how you can use them together, please go ahead and join me over in our Herbalist Path Facebook group. We're going to be doing a series of free classes on herbs for gut health. And in February, I've got a new workshop coming up that is all about leaky gut and how you can use herbs to improve your gut health. I'm going to have a link to the workshop coming up as well as a link to the Facebook group where you can join me for the live classes. It's going to be a good time. I usually like to laugh and giggle a lot in live classes and it's a great way for us to connect. And if you have questions, you can always ask me in the live classes and I'll do my best to address them. 
And also, if you have been enjoying this podcast, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you haven't left a review yet, please, please do. It helps others to hear the podcast. It helps with the mission of inspiring a movement for there to be an herbalist in every home again. And it really, truly helps to make herbalism spread like wildflowers. Thanks so much, everybody. I wish you a beautiful day with plenty of bitters to aid your digestion. This has been The Herbalist's Path. Thanks for joining us. Have we piqued your herb curiosity? Are you thirsty for more? Well, then check out the show notes of today's episode for exciting educational opportunities, workshops, and courses. If you'd like to support our mission, please subscribe, rate, and review to help others find us. Together, we can make herbalism hashtag spread like wildflowers. Wishing you all a lovely day. Bye for now. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the Ella Campaign to the Comfrey and the Arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.